Liz here and in this video I'm following on from my previous Alia tip, the second video which was all about 12 tips for how to learn Hebrew even if you're not yet in Israel. Um, this of course is preparing for coming to Israel. Uh, I have just, I think I'm still under 10 views on that video but i did have somebody send me a question and this video is answering that question so the question was why did i start with the first tip being to read the chumash in the hebrew um the person who asked the question said my hebrew skills are not good enough i can't read the chumash in the hebrew so let's break this down a little bit i have quite a few responses to that question it's a very very good question and uh Let's see where we can go with this. If you're following the Torah lifestyle, um, a baby that's born into a Jewish family is going to naturally hear a certain amount of Hebrew being spoken. Even if the, the family is um, living in another country, we're taking English as their main language of the family because English is the language that I'm using is the, in this video it could obviously be any language that the family speaks and perhaps it's a multilingual family and there's English as well as another language whether it's Yiddish or it's Yiddish would give you a certain amount of Hebrew also so let's put Yiddish aside for a minute and let's say it's either French or it's Spanish or something else like that um, so a baby is going to hear a certain amount of Hebrew being spoken, even when the family's language is something else. For example, on Shabbat, there should be Kiddush being recited, Hamotzi, certain brachot. Hopefully the family are going to say their brachot on food, and that's going to be saying certain brachot. Hopefully there'll be a little bit of learning taking place in the home as well. And there'll also be, naturally, as a result, some pesukim being mentioned. So hopefully, in a good Jewish home, there'll be some Hebrew happening in any case. This starts to, to get the child to be used to the language that was actually used in creating the world. Hebrew is the first language, and Hebrew is the language that Hashem used in creating everything. So... Um, Hebrew should be a little bit familiar, certainly from hearing it right from the beginning. Once the child gets to three years old, they're going to start to learn the Aleph base. And if you break that down, it's quite fun that Aleph base, alphabet, there's a similarity, there's a connection, and that's not a coincidence. That's where alphabet comes from. So we're going to start to learn the Aleph, Aleph base, the uh, child is going to learn by having honey put onto the aleph or onto the base. Um, it helps to bring sweetness in the learning and learning of the letters from reading and later on from writing is going to be introduced uh, in a formal manner from three years old. Some, some families will start to do so a little bit younger depending on what the the uh, intelligence and the skills are of the child. So the next milestone that a child should naturally uh, reach, according to Pirkei Avot, will be at five years old when they start to learn to read the Chumash. And here we say to learn in Hebrew, there's um, a task that we should be doing, for want of a better word, a practice perhaps is a is a better way to say it a, one of the daily routines that we should be getting into is to keep up with reading the Pasha of the week doing it according to the time as to when we would be reading the Pasha the um, Torah portion for the week in Shul so the beginning would be towards the end of Sukkot, Sukkot when uh, we turn the Torah back to the beginning again and we start with Bereshit. So that's a little bit of an introduction. Hopefully you're going to be getting to read the Chumash in any case. If you're reading in any case, it's an easy way to be getting into improving your Hebrew skills. Here comes to 
tip number two and then we're going to backtrack to looking at a a couple of thoughts as to what can we learn when we start to read from the Chumash. So if you're struggling and you're just learning, you know your, alpha, your alphabet, your alpha, aleph base, you can identify the letters, but you're not yet very fluent in reading. You can start off by doing perhaps one word at a time, two words at a time. Maybe you'll manage to do a sentence. Maybe you'll do a full line. Um, a sentence might go... If you're looking at the, the way that it's, the Torah is presented and printed in the Chumashim, in the, in the Bible, in the Chumash, um, a sentence could be shorter than a full line or it could go on to the next line. So if you're progressing up to being able to do a sentence, um, that'll be a very good, you can pace yourself and see how, you be, how you're improving one uh, very good tip that I would give you, which my husband reminded me when I received this question, is that you can purchase a Chumash that has um, a linear translation. It enables you to be able to read the Hebrew. It's transliterated for you so that the Hebrew words that you're going to be reading in the Hebrew letters underneath are going to have the opportunity to read English but it's going to be the Hebrew word so that that's helping you with your reading and then you can start you can look at a good translation I very much enjoy the the art scroll translation of the Chumash get you, make sure that you have an accurate translation and that will help you with your with your translation your Hebrew skills in terms of translating so having introduced the idea of translating let's have a look at a couple of thoughts that you'll come to when you go to the beginning the Chumash is obviously one of the most well printed one of the most popular books that it, that is sold that's on the market and being able to learn from the original is has tremendous benefits in all areas of your life so we can get to a number of thoughts of that perhaps in another video um, I'm wanting to keep this a little bit shorter, but let's have a look at the first three words. We're going to get into the fourth or the fifth word as well. Start off with the first three words that you'll find in the Chumash. And that would be, you'll see it coming up on one of the sides. I don't know which side I'll find space to put it. Um, Bereshit bara elokim. Those are the first three words in the Chumash. And it helps us to realize that this is the beginning of, of, of uh, the story that's told to us. The Chumash is going to give you a certain amount of history. It's going to tell you a certain amount of lifestyle. It's got all sorts of answers. It really is the manual for life. And, uh, and so as we start, when we look at the first word, Bereshit, comes our very first question. Why is the Chumash starting with the second letter of the alphabet? The aleph base. Why does it start with a bait and not with an aleph? So there we already have a question. Now, when you look at the usual translation of Bereshit, usually it's translated as in the beginning. When you start to look at the vowels that are used, within the bait is a dot, a dagesh, and that helps us to know that we're going to be pronouncing the bet as a B and not as a V, which would be a Vet, that doesn't have the Dagesh. So there we already are learning some Dikduk, which is Hebrew grammar. If you look at the vowel that comes underneath, it's, it's printed as a Shva. That's the two dots, one underneath the other. That indicates that the words that we, the translation of the prefix of the Bet is going to be in or with. If it would be in the, there would be a, diff, a patach underneath, that's the line underneath, and that's going to help you to know that we're using, we including in the translation of the prefix is going to be the word the, so it would be in the. So the question is, why is the usual translation in the or not in? Perhaps we need to be looking at the word with. That already brings us another question. 
just going from the grammar. Now we come to the next part of the word Bereshit, and uh, the translation is, if we're looking at the usual translation as being in the beginning, or first, the beginning, the first, if I'm the first, ani areshona. Reshona I'm using because I'm a, it's a feminine, feminine use of the word. Rishon would be first. So Rishon is close to Reshit, but that's not the same word. So it can't be I'm the, the first action taking place because it's not first from the root of the word of the word so there's a there's a difference why am i bringing in rishon because of the word reshit the word beginning is hatchala matchil i begin so we have a set a third question here from that first word we already have questions coming up why is the chumash starting with a bait instead of an aleph why is the translation that's usually used in the and since the vowel that's that's used that we use does not include the but doesn't have a patach underneath and why is the word if it's in the beginning why is it not including a some kind of form of the word lahatchil so there's a question um if so it's Bereshit bara Elohim. And if we go to the fourth word, there's all sorts of questions about the use of the translation of the use of word for God. We're not going to get into that right now. But the fourth word is et, for et hashamayim, the et haaretz. And the question comes as to how do you translate that word et. Here we already have a number of questions coming out. We can talk about this ad infinitum, infinite answers, all sorts of exciting things. And here you can get some insight as to the beauty of the Hebrew language, how many questions come up when you're learning, the importance of knowing your alphabet, of knowing the sequence of, of which letters come after one another, how to be able to break down the words so that you get your prefix, you get your suffix, you're managing to find which what is the root. It gives you an indication as to how much there is to learn of this language of ours that you'll be using if you're coming to Eretz Israel, if you're coming to make Aliyah to live in our holy land. The, um, the tips that I'm giving you to start off the beginning of learning Hebrew goes back to the beginning, which is the Chumash. You're going to need Hebrew in order to learn the Chumash. Learning Chumash helps you to gain all sorts of insights. It's going to give you tools for life. So it's an excellent place to start. And it's going to open your mind, hopefully, to asking questions. How do you find those questions? Well, I invite you to sign up to learn with my husband, Rabbi Eliyahu Shia. He teaches all sorts of different topics of Torah. You can join. We had a number of live shiurim on the go. They kind of put on hold. I would invite you to join on his Patreon so that we can get those going again. But if you're wanting to learn um, directly with him online via Zoom or via Skype, you can learn either individually. We have a few small groups on the go as well. It's an amazing opportunity. You can learn your dikduk. You can learn slowly, slowly. If Chumash is not the topic that you're wanting to learn, you want to learn Halakha, you're wanting to learn something else, there are all sorts of topics that are available. So have a look at his website, which you'll find at lovingkindness.co and do be in touch. It's a wonderful way to start on your journey of Hebrew and you don't have to yet be in Eretz Israel to be starting to learn your Hebrew. But... If you are keeping up to the natural progression, the cycle of life as taught in the Pirkei Avot, you're going to already be starting to gain some Hebrew skills. And life in Israel is, it's all about Hebrew. We need Hebrew in, in our day-to-day -day living in so many ways all the time. So get yourself a copy of a Chumash if you don't already have one. 
sign up to learn with Eliyahu Shia if you don't have your own teacher. And I wish you a lot of Hatzlacha. Hatzlacha is Hebrew for success in your preparation, both in learning Chumash, in learning Hebrew, and in your preparation for coming to Eretz Israel. That's my answer to this question. It was a little bit longer than I thought it would be. There's a lot more that, that could be said about the topic, but uh, I invite you to hurry along. You don't have to wait until you come to Eretz Israel to start your Ulpan and to start learning Hebrew. As I say, any child who's growing up in a Jewish home should be exposed to Hebrew right from when they're a baby and follow the process of Pirkei Avot. There's lots to learn and I wish you lots of luck in your and blessing in your process. Ciao for now. See you in the next video.